Rangatira, e tangiana te motu moa e nei tokorua rangatira ko we hea tui tata i te nei wiki. Na rawa i fakatoa ngā kaupapa hohonu ki a tu kaha tata i rotu i te nei awa huri huri no reira hare korua. Uh, we started this, well, you, might, you might remember it, it was uh, two days ago. <laughs> and uh, we were brought on to this marae uh, and uh, welcomed here by uh, Piri Siasia and, and Hami Piripi. And on our behalf, uh, Tau Huirama replied. And that cleared the way for the discussions that we've been able to have uh, since then. Uh, we've been fortunate to have uh, three kai whakahairu who have kept us very much on time, and, <laughs> and uh, well, they would have been on time if it hadn't been for people at the back asking questions, but the, uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, Mahanga Maru and Hami and uh, Afimai Reynolds have really uh, ushered us and, and shepherded us around, so we're really grateful to them. And I'm uh, personally grateful to uh, uh, two technical support people that I've had working with me, Hayes White and Donna DeFew. And I mention them to, partly to thank them, but also, if this goes wrong, you know who to blame. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the hui started with an introduction from the two CEOs from uh, TPK and Super, Super U. Uh, Michelle uh, really made the point that hope, courage and strength we need to have that to trust in Fano, and the Fano links with iwi. And Claire talked about this, the really importance of good evidence and saw the, this way as an opportunity to share research findings and methodologies. And then uh, uh, Justice Williams gave us an uh, inspiring address, which covered many things, but he played particular emphasis on the notion of whanaungatanga and he thought that, that uh, it, it lives on, and, and it's one of the great challenges of the post-settlement era. Uh, reigniting whanaungatanga requires partnerships, he did use that word, between iwi and the Crown. <laughs> uh, following him, actually I've forgotten to put in my own address, which <laughs> 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 I've just realised that I didn't put it in. Anyway, I can't remember it, but the... Uh, <laughs> We had a uh, really helpful address from uh, Fetu Wirata, who reminded us that what we're doing today has got a history, and that she was one of the pioneers in Maori statistical development, and she talked quite a lot about, uh, about that history, about uh, what's happened since then, and the way that we've come to be at a position we're in now. And then after that, there was a panel uh, of the th <laughs> three uh, speakers, um, I can't actually remember the questions, but they were, they were really insightful questions. <laughs> <laughs> and the answers were even more insightful. Uh, Len uh, Cook gave us a, a great introduction to what we were looking at. And he did make the point that statistical frameworks have a historical context. They haven't just turned up out of the blue, but they've been here for a while. But one of the problems is that we get into a way of doing things and become entrenched in that and that impedes change in the future. And uh, so he uh, said we certainly need to celebrate the journeys we've had, but also need to be thinking about the way ahead and ready for change. And that's essentially what this hui has been about, is getting ready for more change. Uh, Kahu Kore Baker uh, looked at uh, Fano Rangatiratanga frameworks, and she, uh, one of her conclusions was that, and we've heard it repeated since then, was that Mātauranga Māori is a, is a very rich worldview, and it is an, it's a worldview that is important for the development, analysis, and decision making about whānau statistics, and we've heard that over and over again uh, at this uh, conference. Uh, after that, James Hudson told us about the Independent Māori Statutory Board and the work that's been done by that board to monitor uh, their own plan but also to monitor the work of the uh, Auckland City Council. Uh, and he talked a little bit about the report published last year, which was the report on the uh, Independent Maori Statutory Board's first three years and whether they had met their goals, and really uh, reached the conclusion that data can tell the untold story 
of Tamaki Makoto. Uh, Moana Eruera and Leland Rufiu uh, spent some time telling us about the Tiaki Tamariki framework and the, the really need to enhance the mana and tapu in our mokopuna, uh, something we don't always think about, but he did ask us to think about uh, our principles, what they should feel like, and how do we measure intrinsic principles like mana and tapu, particularly when they apply uh, to young people. Uh, Afina Buchanan kept the same theme going. Uh, her talk was on the mana mokopuna framework, and she saw that as a, a, a monitoring framework that will strengthen the voices of uh, mukupuna, whānau, hapu, and iwi. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Atafai Tibble uh, urged us to move beyond the data to create solutions and told us how the Treasury was doing just that, uh, was working on doing just that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're doing that by taking a much more holistic uh, look at issues than they had done in the past. But he also made the point that quite apart from uh, what the government is doing, Iwi and Hapu are coming up with their own well-being frameworks, and again, that was something that we were to hear about uh, later in the hui. Uh, the minister uh, talked about the impact of whānau ora, uh, made the point that this is something that is unique to Te Ao Māori. Uh, it requires the public sector to shift their thinking and try and work in different ways. And the uh, whole notion of collective impact was an important uh, point that he made, and he referred to a number of projects where collective impact was the key to their success. He also made the point that whānau are the solutions, not the problem. Uh, Liz McPherson uh, from STATS uh, talked quite a lot about uh, researchers and research policy. Uh, she also made a point that while data is important, data is not an end point. It's not the end in itself, it's a means to an end. So that sometimes we get lost in the data as if that were the story. Uh, she was very clear that that is not the story, it's a step to something else. And then Andrew uh, Spall uh, talked quite a lot about uh, the next, the subject of whānau wellbeing that will be uh, coming uh, as part of the Te Kupinga series and looked at various uh, dimensions, but including these four capability dimensions of sustainability of te ao Māori, the, an economic dimension, a social capability dimension, and a human resource and human resource potential. Then uh, Ben Dalton uh, uh, talked a bit about his experience in the uh, Northland Economic Growth Strategy and the, uh, how there were growing disparities between economic growth on the one hand, which was increasing, and Māori social wellbeing, which was getting worse. And that gap, he sensed, was getting bigger. Uh, he made an, a number of points, but if Māori's are to be successful and to be big players in a wider economy, we need to invest in the whenua. He saw that as important and in our people then we should be able to realise uh, uh, te pā harakeke, the six markers of flourishing whānau. But his point was really to bring economic development and social development closer together. Uh, then uh, panel two were asked a number of questions and uh, took some time to answer them, but they did. <laughs> and that, that, uh, that uh, brought a close to, the, uh, to day one. We had uh, a dinner that night, and Ngāhi Wiyapanui guided us through that. I think he said he was from Ngāti Pro, but I wasn't 100% sure on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we had a really inspiring uh, speech from uh, Helen Lee, that, who talked about the Te uh, Tahitanga or Te Wai Paunomu and the work that they're doing as a commissioning agency. Uh, really said uh, quite a lot of drew inspiration from uh, Corridor about the way Kore Pupu springs and that we need to have faith in Fano. But her uh, talk really was a great illustration of Fano initiative and Fano uh, enterprise in uh, small, small and large scale uh, into Aiponamu. Uh, this day uh, began with Matua who uh, set us, launched us. Uh, on our way, 
Uh, so thank you for that, uh, Matua. And then that was followed by uh, Dame Tariana Turia, who used her own experience to talk about Fanawara and made the really good point that we might forget sometimes that actually Fanawara is a practice that we live in our day-to-day -day lives, and she illustrated that with her own family. Uh, and she also thought that we need to look towards our own people and our own entities to extend the whanau order reach. That was just a nice way of saying that she didn't have much faith in partnerships. <laughs> uh, Richard Steedman and uh, Amohia Bolton uh, talked about the whanau order partnership group. And uh, Richard gave a long account of the uh, whanau order outcomes framework. <laughs> which he saw as, as a very generic uh, framework that can generate a more coherent and integrated approach to whānau wellbeing. And uh, then Amohia reminded us that technical advisors are important, but she thought that the government advisors, the technicians, were often poorly informed about whānau order, but she's tidying that up. <laughs> uh, Nancy... Uh, has become the latest recruit to the bureaucracy. <laughs> Been committed, uh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's my old words. But uh, she has uh, uh, really made a, uh, interesting comments about how to give life to whānau water within the TPK culture. Uh, saying that if you can't do it in the workplace, you're going to have difficulty understanding it and seeing it uh, as a reality elsewhere. And she thought that was important for all government departments, actually, to have a, uh, an outcomes focus for Fano in their policy work. Then we had uh, three uh, presentations uh, from Mania, Ruahine and Manaya, who were uh, again talking about Te Putahitanga and its role for the, uh, in the South Island for the evolution for whānau. We had a, a great talk about uh, the hikoi waiwai, which was linking whānau with nature and building whanaungatanga, and uh, people walking with pride and connecting with the land, all things that are important for good outcomes for whānau. And then we had a, a, a little bit of a commercial... <laughs> <laughs> <laughs)> ..which... Uh, <laughs> Well, it was interesting because I looked at an enterprise of, uh, which has all the, all the principles of whānau order embedded in it, including one of the principles which is the creation of wealth. And I think he thought he had sold that one to you guys. <laughs> we'll be buying spuds. The uh, uh, Awarangi, uh, you'll notice a surname by the way, Awarangi <laughs> uh, talked about the other commissioning agency which is Te Pō Matakana and that commissioning for outcomes is about what matters to Fano. It's a ground up movement. It has a heart and a mind. It includes stories of Fano. It looks that it's necessary to allow time for people to flourish. It doesn't happen overnight. It's something that is progressive over time. Uh, the importance of collective impact and data collection that is based on well-being indicators. And then Frana and Christine uh, looked into the, uh, how a conventional health service had changed into a whānau water service with practitioners who were able to step right across disciplinary boundaries and sectoral boundaries. And that was a fundamental and major change uh, for that, uh, that unit. And then looked at uh, the difficulties of multiple contracts and multiple re reporting requirement requirements that many uh, NGOs have, and how those challenge the whānau order model. Uh, she talked about the unitary approach, where one point of entry, one plan, one set of uh, reports, how that, uh, and a, a clear set of outcomes rather than multiple outputs, how important that was uh, for, the pro for them, but also for whānau. Cathy uh, talked about our at the beginning about our hope is in our awa, our maunga and our future generations. And I think the link to the environment has come up again, time and again in this corridor. And then she talked about a uh, treaty-based nation building framework uh, with uh, various levels of narratives, structural infrastructure and citizenship, and identified uh, iwi treaty partners and crown treaty partners 
as being part of the framework. Uh, Tahu Kukutai, in her talk on indigenous data sovereignty, uh, started, made it pretty clear about uh, her, her concerns about the uses, abuses, and risks associated with data sharing and data collation, and how that could lead to narratives about failure, which have all too often been the result. In contrast, a Maori data sovereignty a group uh, looking at Maori, uh, the right of Maori to access, use, and have control over Maori data collection and utilization. They will be the kaitiakis of data in the way that we are the kaitiaki for other things, and that collective and communal rights, which don't often uh, appear in data, need to be firmly embedded in data protocols. Uh, Hami Puripi talked about uh, his faith in the uh, iwi chair. No, he talked about... <laughs> he talked about uh, what's, uh, his iwi. <laughs> and uh, the four PO that are guiding uh, them in their, in their search for outcomes, the uh, PO relating to detail, and again, that has been brought up, that, that that's in a critical part of whānau uh, of outcomes is the environment, uh, that tahaputea, uh, independence, and having mana motuhaki is important there, and well whānau. Uh, he uh, thought that it was important for iwi to have outcome measures, but thought it'd be also important that they should align with whānau order outcomes. And that uh, iwi relevant data was going to be increasingly important, uh, that the data we have at present does not have a complete picture, and also made the point that iwi relevant data is pro should best be retained by iwi. And then Violetta and Bev uh, have just talked about interventions at the interface between science and Mātauranga Māori and a, a super new project they're involved in, bridging cultural perspectives. And they have talked about the respect for integrity, ownership, and agreed uses of knowledge and have set out a way of looking at that interface so that it doesn't become a, a point of contention or a point of conflict, but a point where two views can occur in parallel. Uh, as long as people are aware of the uh, objectives of each and respect the integrity of each. So that was uh, about uh, where we got to. Uh, and so what does it all mean? Uh, and, and what it really means is that the, although there have been a lot of people talking uh, up on here, uh, the impact of this hui will come from all of us working together uh, to give effect to some of the points that have been erased here. So this is not just about speakers, it's about the whole hui uh, having a role in making sure that the mahi that we're on reaches a conclusion. Uh, the point's been made time and again, we need to shift the focus, to shift away from deficit thinking, data that leads nowhere, and policies that are based on deficit. And what we need to be increasing and moving towards is data and policies that enable us to realise the potential of whānau, hapu and iwi, rather than what's wrong with whānau, hapu and iwi. So uh, we could look at a uh, wellbeing framework that's kind of relevant to the work that's going on in here. Uh, it might have three dimensions, a whānau dimension, a policy dimension and a measurement dimension. Uh, the whānau dimension, there are some key elements that have appeared, recurred uh, here, that whānau, uh, first of all, are mediators for Māori wellbeing. They sit between individuals on the one hand and iwi on the other, and they are the mediators of wellbeing uh, for Māori generally. We uh, talked about the significance of whakapapa, because there is a past and a future there, and that whānau have intergenerational capacities that very few other organisations have. The Fanongatanga point started out by uh, Justice Williams, but that's uh, been increasingly recognised that Fanongatanga between Fano connections between within Fano is uh, going to be important, and it'll be more challenging as Fano become more and more dispersed around the world. But also between Fano and Iwi, there are important connections that haven't always been made, and between Fano and the communities and where they live there are connections there to be made. 
the question of whānau and land was raised uh, frequently, that uh, without land it's hard to have mana whenua and it's hard to talk about being tangata whenua. If you don't have whenua, you're only half there. And so the, uh, the, the, those five elements were recurring in our discussions. Then there's the policy d d dimension. Uh, policies for Māori wellbeing should be shaped by fair and just relationships between iwi and the Crown. I did have partnerships in there, but I took it out. <laughs> um, Dame Tariana and Pirapi, uh, we're, uh, we're, bit, we're talking about a relationship, with, and we're talking about a relationship which is fair and just. Uh, the other point is that policies for Māori wellbeing should be consistent across government departments and ministries, and they're not, so that there's a pr big problem for the government in having a consistent approach to Māori wellbeing, which goes right across uh, the ministries, especially the Inland Revenue Department, and, and that policies uh, for Māori wellbeing are built around whānau aspirations, not about whānau difficulties and problems, and policies for Māori wellbeing endorse Māori worldviews, they recognise Māori rights to information, knowledge and wellness. And the third dimension was we talked about quite a lot about measurements and there are four principles that seem to emerge. There's the mana principle, measurements are derived from Māori hopes and aspirations and are owned by Māori. The Māori principle, measurements are contextualised by te ao Māori. The mātauranga principle, measurements are based on relevant and confirmed knowledge and the Mōkai principle, measurements are the servants, not the master. Uh, that, uh, the, as uh, mentioned before, uh, measurements are not an end point, but they are a guide to other things. So that's the, uh, what we've uh, talked a lot, a lot about whānau and how we can conceptualise that, the way policies are made by iwi, by the government, and how, how we measure progress into the future. So I might leave it there, except again to thank uh, Super U and uh, Te Puni Kōkuri for the huge amount of work they've put into making this happen, uh, for their patience, and uh, for all of you who have been able to participate in it uh, to make it what it's been. I see I've got one minute and 57 seconds left, so I'll leave it there. Kia ora. <laughs>